Glenn Beckish Tea Party Welcome to Kevin Jackson. Thank you. I see you guys in those mob t shirts out there. I love you. Hello, St. Charles. Before I start, I want to take a moment to thank uh, the folks that organized this thing. Joe Brazel and his team, so let's give them a round of applause. It's always good to get a couple thousand people together. It's not that simple. Uh, I have to tell you, I love hanging out with you radicals. I'm excited to be here. I'm actually happy. As Oscar Wilde says, some cause happiness wherever they go, and others cause it whenever they go. You want to know why? Uh, I love getting together with you guys, with you good folks, and uh, I, I don't mind them calling us tea baggers because, uh, but I don't mind getting together with you guys because we talk radical. Last time I gathered with so many terrorists in one location, we talked about when I could get back to Quincy. I know you guys are out there. You've been coming over here saying hello. And then we really went insane and we discussed things like fishing and hunting and baseball, for God's sake. It's no wonder they consider us radical. And to think, we could have been plotting to blow up a skyscraper in Dallas or plotting to kill American soldiers at Fort Dix or Quantico like those Al-Qaeda guys who were found plotting to do those exact things here in America. Apparently, young bearded men with names like Muhammad and Ahmed don't fit the profile of extremists. <laughs> the sad thing is, if they'd been wearing United States military uniforms or attending tea parties, this administration would have watched them like hawks. <laughs> For those of you who didn't catch it, my name is Kevin Jackson and I wrote the book on racism against the left. I am here to get the word out on, liber on the liberals and I speak for you folks when I travel around the country. My book is entitled The Big Black Lie and I hope you will get a signed first edition copy and one of these mob shirts, join my mob, or one of the extreme takeover shirts, White House edition, that's over there as well. But seriously, I, I like speaking at these events because it reminds me of my childhood. The camaraderie of friends going uh, to play baseball, eating hot dogs, and uh, I can tell you it's really tough finding these types of things in America anymore. Recently, two million patriots assembled in D.C. and you would have never guessed it. Yeah, you would have never guessed it. They left that place spotless. And at Obama's inauguration, D.C. looked like a war zone. It was truly a Dickens tale of two cities. They say we are angry. I say we're disgusted. And we have a right to be. We are witnessing the most amazing attempt to dismantle what we know as America than anybody's lifetime who can hear my voice. Our enemies on the outside are nothing compared to the enemies within. And I'm going to tell you who the enemies are, folks. The enemies are liberals. Liberals say they are open-minded. I say an open mind can be an empty head. Liberals say they are tolerant. And I say tolerance can equate to believing nothing. Allow me to translate what I just said by quoting the great NFL running back and fellow black conservative Jim Brown. A liberal will cut off your leg so he can hand you a crutch. George Orwell said, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. And I'm going to do my part to start a revolution today and expose some of the agenda of the left, if y'all want me to do that.
So I'm going to begin with a topic that's near and dear to my heart. That topic is racism. I put racism where it belongs, on the left, if you read anything I write. When cornered, the left says that racism is all in the past. I say to him, you lie! Barbara Boxer showed her racist hand taken on Harry Alford, chairman of the National Black Chamber of Commerce, but that Harry proved to be one uppity Negro. He had Boxer backtracking, and she was so apologetic that I just knew she was gonna tell us how many black friends she had. <laughs> Maureen Dow pulled the race card on Joe Wilson. She put words in his mouth, adding boy to his statement. She said that Wilson didn't know how to kowtow to a black president. I'm glad that Maureen was good enough to explain to us about Joe Wilson, or who knows, we might have come to our own conclusion. And we might have concluded that Obama was lying like a no-legged dog. Then we had Jimmy Carter, the worst ex-president in America's history, weighing in. Because it makes sense that the most powerful man in the country needs the help of the worst ex-president in American history if he's black. Because black people, no matter how high they rise, need whites to help them. How ridiculous is that? Jimmy Carter, who if brains were leather, couldn't saddle a June bug, informed us that Joe Wilson is a racist. Well, who better than a Southern Democrat to spot one? It takes one to know one. Even the White House tried to distance himself, itself from Carter, essentially saying, he's a good dog, but sometimes he craps a little too close to the porch. Now, Obama